Hello, this is Max, a young girl who was tormented in a cabin while on vacation seeks revenge on her abusers who left her for dead. Don't forget to subscribe. The movie's main character is Jennifer Hills, a New York City novelist. As an independent woman, she embarks on a journey to a quaint village in Connecticut, where she has rented a cabin. Jennifer believes that the tranquility and peaceful environment will help her overcome a writer's block. During her trip, Jennifer stops at a local shop, where she encounters Earl, who appears to be the cabin's owner. Earl provides her with the keys and directions to the cabin, and Jennifer, though grateful, doesn't pay close attention to the instructions before leaving. As Jennifer continues her journey, she becomes captivated by the picturesque countryside. However, the indistinguishable roads confuse her, prompting her to seek directions at a nearby gas station. At the gas station, she encounters three men, all of whom come across as lecherous. From the moment Jennifer enters the gas station, the men begin ogling her in an unsettling manner. One of them, named Johnny, even tries to make advances toward her. In response, Jennifer defends herself, causing Johnny to stumble over a bucket of oil. This incident causes Andy and Stanley to burst into laughter, while Jennifer drives away, leaving Johnny clearly embarrassed by his failed advances. In the subsequent scene, Jennifer finally arrives at the cabin, situated near a picturesque lake. She unpacks her belongings and settles in, making herself comfortable. That night, she wastes no time and begins working on her new novel. Her focused writing suggests that the isolated setting is helping her concentrate. The following morning, Jennifer relaxes by the lake, but she hears unusual noises. Initially, she dismisses them, attributing them to potential animal sounds. However, as the evening arrives, the persistent noise continues to interfere with her work, prompting her to investigate its source. After a while, she comes across a nearby shed, and it becomes evident that the noise is emanating from inside the shed. However, when Jennifer enters the shed, she discovers nothing out of the ordinary except for some tools, bottles of poison, and various machinery. With no further leads, she returns to her cabin and resumes her work. Unfortunately, while lifting her laptop, Jennifer accidentally spills her drink. Left with dirty clothes, she decides to wash them in the kitchen sink. To her surprise, an unknown person is secretly recording her during this vulnerable moment. The following morning, Jennifer goes for a jog through the woods to maintain her fitness. Along the way, she stumbles upon an abandoned house and initially decides to investigate. However, upon finding the house eerie and unsettling, she quickly retreats. After some time, she returns home and intends to take a shower, but she encounters a problem with the taps, which seem to be clogged. In response, she contacts a plumber for assistance. In the next scene, a man named Matthew arrives to fix the plumbing issue. It becomes evident that Matthew suffers from a mental disorder that hinders his ability to communicate effectively. Nevertheless, he successfully completes the job, restoring the water flow. Jennifer is so delighted with the outcome that she approaches Matthew and surprises him with a sudden kiss. Matthew, caught off guard and unprepared for this, promptly flees the scene without even accepting payment. This scene transitions to the three friends from the gas station, who are hanging out by the lake. Stanley is recording their interactions with his video camera, as he has a passion for it. Suddenly, the panicked Matthew rushes toward them and explains how Jennifer kissed him earlier. Johnny is skeptical, thinking Matthew might be bluffing, but Stanley believes it could be true. Stanley then shows them the secret footage he took of Jennifer the previous night, in which he was barely dressed. This footage leads the group to believe that Jennifer may be open to some fun, so they devise an evil plan to confront her. Later that evening, Jennifer is awakened by strange noises. Frightened, she decides to investigate and discovers a dead bird outside. When she returns to her room, she finds her laptop open, with the wallpaper displaying images of the three guys from the gas station. This revelation makes her realize that her house has already been infiltrated. As Jennifer desperately screams for help, Johnny, Andy, and Stanley surround her from different directions. Matthew is also dragged into the room to participate in their sinister act, reluctantly relenting to peer pressure. The group proceeds to torment Jennifer by forcibly inserting various objects into her mouth. However, when the guys become too relaxed in their actions, Jennifer seizes the opportunity. First, she strikes Andy's knee with a vodka bottle and then sprays Stanley with pepper spray. Jennifer's ordeal takes a terrifying turn as she encounters Earl and Sheriff Stork in the woods. Stork initially reassures her, showing his badge and claiming she's safe now. He sends Earl away and accompanies Jennifer back to the cabin under the pretense of confronting the supposed wrongdoers. 
However, upon reaching the cabin, Stork's attitude undergoes a sinister transformation. Discovering alcohol on the table, he becomes suspicious of Jennifer's story. Despite her desperate pleas of victimhood, he dismisses her claims and insists on searching her. Jennifer, innocently complying, allows the corrupt sheriff to run his hands down her waist. As she attempts to resist, the other men, including Matthew and the gas station friends, enter the room, revealing themselves as Stork's accomplices. Jennifer finds herself trapped in a horrifying situation with no means of escape. The men forcibly strip her, and Matthew is the first to initiate cruel actions against her, subjecting her to his desires. Jennifer, in excruciating pain, slowly exits the room, but the men follow her. And he viciously grabs her hair and submerges her face in a puddle multiple times. Following this, all the men take turns committing unspeakable acts of cruelty against her. Shockingly, even the sheriff, who should uphold the law, actively participates in these heinous acts. The group of evil men, led by Sheriff Stork, records their horrific actions against Jennifer, making sure to capture the entire ordeal on Stanley's video camera to amplify the brutality of the situation. After subjecting Jennifer to unspeakable torment, she is left barely conscious. Despite her weakened state, Jennifer manages to muster the strength to walk deeper into the woods, desperately hoping to encounter someone who can help her. However, the evil men persistently follow her, eventually cornering her on a bridge with Stork ready to deliver a fatal blow. In a shocking turn of events, Jennifer jumps into the river, seemingly taking an unthinkable action. The group searches for her for a while, but they find no trace of her, leading them to decide on erasing all the evidence of their heinous acts. They burn her belongings in the cabin, and Stanley is tasked with destroying the incriminating video footage. Sheriff Stork returns home to his family as if nothing had transpired, despite having a daughter of his own. He callously destroyed another young woman's life. Several weeks later, the group of evil men seems to have put the incident behind them, living normal lives, drinking beer, and enjoying themselves. The only one visibly affected is Matthew, who spends most of his time in solitude, tormented by regret for his actions. One day, Johnny is relaxing outside his house when Stanley rushes to him with troubling news. Stanley reveals that someone has stolen his camera and it contained a controversial footage that he failed to destroy earlier. This revelation sends Johnny into a fit of rage and he immediately attacks his friend for jeopardizing their safety. That night, as Johnny is alone at home, he is startled by a noise. Investigating the disturbance, he finds a dead bird, which hints at unsettling developments. Johnny's attempts to dismiss the strange occurrences as pranks prove futile when the dead bird inexplicably reappears. It becomes increasingly apparent that someone is toying with him, heightening his unease. Frustrated and alarmed, Johnny retrieves his gun, preparing to confront the situation. To his astonishment, he finds Jennifer's slipper on his porch, sending shivers down his spine. He searches the area thoroughly but finds no one. Meanwhile, as Sheriff Stork returns home from work, his wife hands him a package, claiming it was delivered by an unknown person. Initially, he believes it to be an early Christmas gift, but his horror intensifies as he discovers that it contains one of Stanley's illicit tapes. Consumed by fury, he confronts the group, demanding an explanation and suspecting that Stanley is intentionally attempting to destroy his family. Johnny, however, defends his friend and suggests that someone else is targeting them. Recognizing the grave danger they are in, Sheriff Stork decides to eliminate all potential loose ends. Earl becomes the first victim as he had witnessed Stork escorting Jennifer into the cabin on that fateful night. Stork then sets his sights on Matthew, who was never fully on board with their sinister plan. The scene transitions to Matthew, who is outside the cabin, still haunted by the memories of the gruesome past. He suddenly hears a peculiar voice, prompting him to rush inside the cabin. As he searches through each room, an accidental misstep causes him to lose his footing and tumble down the stairs. When he regains consciousness, he is confronted by a shocking sight. Jennifer sitting on the couch, her eyes filled with anger. Jennifer, seemingly showing empathy, accepts Matthew's profuse apologies. However, her compassion is a ruse, and she takes advantage of an opportune moment. She uses a rope to seemingly kill him. The following day, Stanley and Andy embark on a search for Matthew and stumble upon the same abandoned house they had encountered earlier. Eddie ventures inside to investigate, leaving Stanley outside. In a startling turn of events, Stanley comes face to face with Jennifer, who sports an evil grin on her face. He attempts to confront her but falls victim to a bear trap she had placed, causing him to scream in agony. Hearing Stanley's cries, 
and he rushes out of the house, only to be swiftly incapacitated by Jennifer. Stanley receives a similar fate when she brutally strikes him across the head with a baseball bat. In the subsequent scene, Stanley awakens to find himself tied to a tree, with Jennifer capturing the entire ordeal on his own camera, mirroring his previous actions. She proceeds to subject Stanley to a torturous ordeal. In the final scene, she cuts up the fish and lays it on his face. This smell of the fish attracts crows, which begin to attack the helpless Stanley. Trapped and unable to move, he loses his sight and eventually dies from his injuries, bleeding to death. The following day, Jennifer goes to the gas station, indecently dressed, and Johnny falls for her bait. As he approaches her, she swiftly knocks him out with a powerful strike to the head. Jennifer then takes Johnny to the same abandoned house, where she ties him up in a vulnerable state. Her torment begins as she systematically inflicts pain upon him. She bullies him, all the while reminding him of the horrifying acts he and his friends had committed against her. In a twisted act of revenge, she shoves her gun down his throat, mirroring the brutality he had inflicted upon her earlier. However, Johnny responds to the pain with maniacal laughter, displaying a disturbing lack of remorse. It becomes evident that he has learned nothing from his heinous actions. Jennifer's anger escalates, and she takes drastic measures. Enraged, she grabs a pair of scissors and begins to mutilate Johnny by cutting something off. Then she makes him eat what she cut off. Johnny screams in agony and eventually succumbs to his injuries due to extreme blood loss. The following day, as Sheriff Stork is driving, he receives a call from his wife, who informs him that their daughter's teacher, Jennifer, has arrived and wishes to speak with him. Stork is taken aback by this unexpected revelation and hastily turns his car around, fearing for his family's safety. However, upon his arrival home, he discovers that Jennifer has already taken their daughter to the park. In a desperate attempt to protect his family, Stork rushes to the park where Jennifer has taken his daughter. As he searches frantically for them, Jennifer suddenly ambushes him from behind and swiftly incapacitates him, rendering him unconscious. When Stork regains consciousness, he is in a nightmarish scenario. Jennifer has forcefully inserted a rifle into his back, causing him excruciating pain. She pushes it further, making him scream in agony. As Jennifer moves across the room, she uncovers another man, Matthew, who is still alive but unconscious. Jennifer then ties a string around Matthew's hand, with the other end attached to the rifle's trigger. She chillingly explains that any movement by Matthew would result in both of their deaths. Jennifer coldly leaves the room, leaving both men to face their impending fate. Matthew eventually awakens and, in a panic, makes a sudden movement, which leads to a horrifying outcome. Both men are killed instantly as the rifle discharges. The movie concludes with Jennifer, her revenge finally complete, faintly smiling as she stands over the lifeless bodies of Sheriff Stork and Matthew. If you are interested in such films, please proceed to the next video on the screen and also share your thoughts about this film in the comments. Give us a like and subscribe. Goodbye.